Okay, I think we're live here. Hi everyone, uh, thanks for joining us tonight. We are um, just a couple housekeeping notes before we really get it started for our presenter today. Uh, first, if you have any questions, you can put them in the Q&A box. Those will go directly to our presenter. Your camera and your microphone are off, so our presenter cannot hear you or see you. Um, and then another couple of plugs, we do have some more presentations throughout the couple coming weeks. So make sure you go to IACAC.org to sign up for any other sessions you might be interested in. This will be recorded and available for you to review again. So uh, you can hopefully do that if you want to remember anything you hear today. Um, and then I'll uh, come back shortly after our presenter is done with uh, some ending of the night housekeeping notes. Uh, other than that, we're going to take it away and I hand it off to our presenters. Thank you, Catherine. Hi, everybody. My name is Greg Huss. I'm a Director of Admission and Financial Aid here at Carthage. And if you'll give me one second, I'm gonna share my screen. So hopefully you can all see the same thing I'm seeing and not just me. So let's get it started here. All right, so um, if you're not familiar with where Carthage is located, we are located right between Milwaukee and Chicago. And we are right on Lake Michigan, as you could see there on that previous picture. If we get any closer, you're gonna get wet, right? I'm gonna start you out with a quick video here. See your future on the horizon? So do we. At Carthage College, we will push you to dive deep, to channel your curiosity and excel in your chosen field. ignite your true potential and start asking the hard questions, you'll find that the answers are just the beginning. That's the moment your purpose comes into view. Some things you just need to see for yourself. We hope you enjoy your visit to Carthage College. All right, well, we hope you do visit soon. Obviously, we're not doing that today, but we're gonna give you a little bit of an overview of the campus. Obviously, we'll talk kind of from the 10,000 level foot view of the campus. Your, uh, as Catherine said, your question and answer line is open. Please feel free to ask questions on there. And then at the end of the presentation, I will try to cover those. I will say, if I don't get to your question, um, I will get back to you after the presentation in the coming day or two uh, with more information. But let's talk a little bit about the, the, the college and the experience here. So here at Carthage, if, if you come and visit, you're gonna see all the facilities. The nice thing is this campus, even though we're over 170 years old, we've been on this location since 1962, but the buildings don't look like 1962 anymore. Most of the buildings are either brand new, have been renovated, or in all the technology is state of the art here. We've spent over 250 million in recent years. So you've got a new science center, new business center with its own Starbucks, new residence halls, library, recreation center, nursing lab, uh, and much, much more. You'll see that all on tour if you can come and visit. We are doing individual tours right now. And also we just started Saturday, small group tours. You would have your own tour guide. Um, it definitely would not be um, large groups whatsoever, obviously. But here's a couple of pictures of campus just to kind of get you warmed up and give you an overview of what things look like here at Carthage. We do have several decks that overlook the lake in front of those people. The lake is right over that railing there. That's our student union, pretty new building, open 24 seven. The, uh, there's uh, several different restaurants, um, convenience store. There is a movie theater in there. The bookstore is in there overlooking the, the football field. This is the front of our science building. That's the atrium there. Uh, and that little gray thing popping up above there, that's actually our planetarium that goes down into the inside there. Those red tables overlook the lake on your right. Here's, a, oh, we have many examples of classrooms. This would be one of our very, very small classrooms, but uh, you don't find any lecture halls here on the campus. This would be, you know, like I said, one of our smallest classrooms. These students are having a study group, it looks like in here, overlooking Lake Michigan. Hey, I mentioned we have a Starbucks, and there it is, right in the middle of the business center, a lot of study area outside of there. Uh, this is uh, an area in one of the buildings where uh, you might 
uh, visit for some presentations, or you might even give a presentation here. There's big screen TVs up over the top of where those students are sitting. And speaking of study areas, these are all faculty offices down the right side of your screen. But what's interesting is we really want you to be close to our professors. So when we designed this building, the professors were the ones that asked to have those study areas intermingled in there. So that's why you have the students sitting outside faculty offices. That makes it really easy for you to ask for help or ask questions to your faculty. They're, they're right there for you. Um, I've got four kids. I've been through this before, so I kind of know what you're going through. Uh, my youngest uh, child is a freshman in college. Uh, three of my four kids did come to Carthage. However, my oldest boy said to me, hey, dad, uh, you work at Carthage. I'll go anywhere else. I don't want to go where dad works. So we toured schools in four different states before he chose uh, where he was going to go. Ultimately, he did choose to go to Carthage, which was kind of funny after all that. But it's, you know, we see a lot of students that come and visit from all over the nation. They're not really sure what to ask on their college visits. Some of them do know what to ask. If you're not sure what to ask, here's a couple starter questions. And these are, are questions that I used with my kids when I was out on college tours. This will lead you to a lot more questions, trust me. But you can ask, how are you going to learn? That's important because everybody's a little bit different on that. Every school is a little bit different. Who are you going to learn from? Professors, TAs, graduate students. Number three is location. How's that going to benefit you? We see, uh, I see a lot, of, a lot of families overlook how important that one is. We'll talk more about that here in a minute. Uh, student life, you guys, you, you want to have a good time, you want to build good memories. Academics are important, but at the end of the day, you want to have a great college experience too. Uh, financial aid, scholarships, uh, anybody want those? Those are always good, right? And then career development, will there be proactive career development for you? And so I'm, I kind of built this, uh, you know, over, over this presentation around those six questions, and we'll cover those as we go through and try to highlight on them. So the curriculum here at Carthage, let's learn about how you're going to learn. We've got over 50 majors and minors, and you know whether you know your major or not, that's okay. Um, I know some students are stressed out at this time of year when they're seniors about, oh my gosh, I have to figure out what I'm going to do with my life. My oldest son was one of those. He was really stressing out my wife and I because he just thought he had to have it all figured out going into college. And here's the reality, you don't. Um, you don't have to have it all figured out. It's hard to know at 18, 19 years old what you want to do the rest of your life. In fact, over 50% of students come in undecided. Did you know what the number one major for college freshmen in America actually is? It is undecided. So um, don't stress too much about that. But I will tell you, one of the things that Carthage does really well is that we allow you to explore freshman year. So you might hear your friends going to other schools saying, hey, I'm, I'm gonna take all gen eds freshman year because that's what most schools will give you in the freshman year is general education courses, right? Here at Carthage, we'll give you some general education courses, but we really want you to take courses freshman year in areas you think you might want to major in to try it on and see if you like it. If you know your major when you walk in the door, that's awesome. Let's get you started. Let's find out if that's truly your passion. If you're not 100% sure about your major, that's okay. Freshman year, you can take two or three, maybe four different classes in areas you think you might be interested in. I'll tell you what, my, my oldest son was a great example of that. Every school we visited, he thought he wanted to be a physical therapy major and they say, great, you'll start classes in your physical therapy major starting junior year or at the earliest second semester sophomore year. But they also, you know, he would say, well, what if I get into it and I don't like it? And they say, well, then you apply to a different program at the college, uh, but you're going to be in school five or six years. He chose to go to Carthage and he's kind of a stereotypical student, you know, freshman year he took some gen eds, but he also took classes in the pre-health program towards physical therapy. He took a political science course because he wanted to know more about that as a potential major. He took a business course, never had one of those in high school, so he tried it on. Here's what happened at the end of the year. He said, hey dad, I've been math and science my whole high school career and I'm really good at it, but I figured out it's not my passion. It's not what I want to do. I love the way Wall Street works. I love the way corporations work. I love that business course that I took. I'm going to become an accounting major. So physical therapy to accounting, you know, really closely related major or not. <laughs> Um, but, you know, that's an example of him finding his way through one course freshman year. And I see that so often with students. I've seen students come in that think they know exactly what they're going to major and also freshman year, they're like, hey, maybe I like this other thing a little bit more. But don't get me wrong, some students come in and they stick with the thing that they thought they loved the whole, you know, four years. It's really up to you, but we want to get you started right away freshman year. So big advantage for our students. The other thing we want to do is we want to make you marketable for careers for graduate programs, whatever it is you decide to do after school. There's a number of ways we do that. Number one, 
we're gonna give you three life skills. When we talk to human resource managers, there's three life skills they want you to have. They want you to have critical thinking, they want you to have oral communication skills, they want you to have written communication skills. But they tell us a lot of students don't have that upon graduation anymore, because apparently a lot of schools don't teach that stuff. Here it's part of the curriculum no matter what you major in. And I think that quote at the bottom of the screen really sums up why we do that, because the American Association of Colleges and Universities did an employer survey and it came back, one of the questions, 93% of employers said that your ability as an employee to think critically, communicate clearly and solve complex problems, in many cases is more important than the major itself. It doesn't mean you don't need a major, it just means you need something to go on top of that. I'll give you another real world example. I'm not trying to scare you, but give you a little real world of what's gonna come after graduation. When you graduate, there's gonna be over 2 million other college graduates across the nation looking for jobs, looking to get into graduate programs. So what differentiates you from them? Before I came back to Carthage, I worked for almost 20 years uh, for a corporation in the Chicago area. I was a hiring manager there. I hired a lot of university students. I interviewed a lot of university students. And unfortunately, you know, a lot of them just didn't have anything extra to separate them. The job required a college degree. So when I'd say, what did you do for four years outside of the classroom? Many of them say, hey, I got my college degree. I'm ready to go. Well, that's great. But so does everybody else applying for the job. Now, what else, what separates you? So, you know, that's what we try to do here. We try to give you some skills to separate you from the herd. This is just one piece of it. I'll show you a few more here in a moment. Uh, here's the Carthage plan. I'm not going to dive too deep into the pie graph, but just know that the way that we teach here is high impact learning practices. Now, we didn't make that up. That's something the American Association of College and Universities studied. How do you as a human being learn best? Hey, some people like large lecture halls. Uh, that's something we don't have here. We really want you to have a hands-on style of education. So we do a lot of undergraduate research. That's not just science, that's across all majors. A lot of study groups, community-based learning, internships, and your capstone project would be your senior thesis. Don't freak out when I say thesis. Um, that's an advantage for you because it's something for you to put on your resume that a lot of other college graduates will not have in their undergraduate years. But you're going to be super excited to, to, uh, to do that because it's something you're passionate about. You're going to pick the subject, you're going to do the research, and then senior year, you're going to give that to your professors and they're going to help you along the way. Like I said, you put that on your resume. It helps employers understand who you are and why you're different. A few other ways that we, uh, we teach uh, here at Carthage. Now, if I don't touch on a a major that you're interested in, please know that it's not because it's, it's not important to us. It's just that we'd be here until, you know, Friday afternoon if I went over them all. I mean, I got nowhere to go, but I think we have a time limit here, so I won't do that. But if you want to be in the healthcare industry, uh, freshman biology has a program called Phage Hunters. It's one of the few like it in America. You're going to get graduate level research starting freshman year. If you want to be a business student, we've got our own consulting firm. Um, it's only one of two like it in the nation. Harvard's got the other one, but we had ours first. Uh, so, you know, we're excited about that. It's an MBA level experience as, as we've been told by CEOs and you're rubbing elbows with C-level executives. Pretty cool. The girl spinning on your screen, she's part of the NASA microgravity team. Uh, that's uh, something for our physics and, and engineering majors. Um, they have the ability to work directly with NASA. In fact, Carthage is the only college or university anywhere in America that NASA has invited undergraduate students to work with them every year for the last 11 years in a row. When you go to test your experiment, you got to put a flight suit on, go down to Florida, get on board that aircraft that she's inside of. It creates zero gravity environment to collect your data. Obviously, they have a little bit of fun while they're out there too. Uh, teacher education program, we're going to get you observation hours right here in the local schools and so on and so forth. We could talk about all the majors, uh, but you kind of get the idea. It's, it's a hands-on style of education. Hey, there's Megan. She's inside. What the, the plane's called Zero G. It's, uh, it creates a zero gravity environment. You can see the experiment she was collecting data on next to her. As I mentioned, our undergraduate research is huge here. It's really the core of what we do across all majors. You can even continue to do that in the summer. If your professor is doing research, which they all do, you can, um, you can apply to be part of that program. You get to live on campus for free in the newest residence hall. You get to uh, get a free food plan. You get a paycheck and you get a research experience. So, you know, you live on the beach all summer, you get paid and you get research experience. What could be better? The Aspire program, this is something we're really, really proud of. And I've got another video here for you. This is our career development program. Uh, we're not like most universities where it's just optional for you to go in there and visit. 
most students in America, when they go to a career center, they kind of wait till maybe senior year when they go, oh, wow, I'm going to graduate. I should go find a job. Um, here it starts freshman year. We take you through four years of comprehensive career development, and you will have a career coach as part of that program starting freshman year, no matter what you think you want to major in. So there's no surprises in the senior year. Here's Lisa to tell you more about. The labor market is changing and traditional career services doesn't work the way it should to help students to plan for their futures and to be well prepared. In the traditional career center, students come in, they get help with resumes, cover letters, interviewing, and we still do those things at Carthage, but we also do a lot more than that. As part of the Aspire program, all students will get access to internships, research, and other meaningful opportunities that will give them the skills and connections that they need. These are not things that we simply hope will happen. These are built into the student experience. Each student is assigned a career specialist, and that career specialist is like a guide that helps students to know both the other students that they need to get connected to for the good of their, their personal and professional development, as well as the alumni and friends of the college who are so committed to Carthage and ensuring that Carthage students transition well into the world after graduation. Based firmly in the Milwaukee to Chicago corridor, our students get access to great internships and research experiences and have opportunities to work at some of the best organizations in the world. We have built this as a program that builds on a long history of great experiences that students receive here, whether that's um, the excellent mentoring that they get from faculty members, the J-term experiences, great internships, and of course, exceptional outcomes. The Aspire program is really built to help you to explore who you are and all of the ways that you could potentially make a difference in the world. You're never done learning and growing. Developing who you are and how you want to build a career is an ongoing process. So it starts in your first days while you're here at Carthage, but it continues well past graduation. The Aspire program has been built for students with students and it's only available at Carthage College. And this is a program we, we love students get into it freshman year. And as Lisa mentioned, internships are part of that program. This is just the tip of the iceberg. You probably recognize a few of those. But remember earlier I said one of the questions you want to ask in College of Visits is, how's the location going to benefit me? This is something a lot of students overlook when they're on their college search. And the reason it's so important is internships. A lot of internships turn into full-time job offers. And so being that we're right in the heart of the Milwaukee-Chicago corridor, we have a lot of relationships in Chicago, in Milwaukee, and everything in between Kenosha Racing. Kenosha is the fourth biggest city in the state right now. We are growing economically at a very fast rate. So between Chicago and Milwaukee, there's a lot going on, but we also have connections all over America. The other nice thing is because you started classes in your major, potentially freshman year here, you can have an internship the summer after your sophomore year. That's pretty rare in America, but you can do it here. Um, you can have a, another internship the summer after junior year. You can have another internship during the semester, junior or senior year, if it's a local organization. So most of our students that like to have internships will have one to three internships by graduation. And a lot of times they'll have their choice of job offers because of that before graduation. By the way, internships nowadays, hey, many of them are paid, which is pretty awesome. If you want to study abroad, we have a great program for that as well. We have students going all over the world, although not this year due to the pandemic. Um, if you want to travel, but we're, you're, you don't want to go for a whole semester, this might be the program for you. We have 20 to 24 study tours that go all over the world in the month of January. January is called J-term here. It's its own three-week semester. We're ranked number three for short-term study abroad. And there's a curriculum built around this uh, trip. There would be, you know, it's optional whether you want to go or not but you get to choose where you want to go. The professors lead the trips and you really, um, you, you get to see things while you're learning about them. You get college credit for this as well. So it's a really cool experience for our students. All right, so you've learned about how important location is. You've learned about how you're going to learn here, very hands-on experiential type learning. Uh, how about the faculty? Who are you going to learn from? So here we don't hire TAs. You won't have a graduate student teacher class. It's always going to be a professor small class sizes. You will not find a large lecture hall here. Professors will know you by name. I promise you will not be an ID number to them. 
And they're very well connected people. We recruit them from the best graduate programs all over America. Um, and uh, we had a student that had to, do, this was a communication student that had to do a class project and she decided to make it about our professors. So we liked it so much, we decided to show it to uh, other people. I love the professors. My favorite is Aaron Troutwine, awesome guy. Danny Geary. Dr. Miller. Stephanie Mitchell. Jose Montoto. Laura Haracha. Allison Kiesel. Dr. Mahoney. Katina Petsis. Professor McGuire. Eric Pullen. All of the professors at Carthage are very accessible. They always have their doors open and you're always welcome to come in and ask a question or just stop by and say hi. Most of the time I'll walk past the door and one of the professors will shout my name to ask me to come into the office. So there's a lot of like really friendly openness involved in that. One time I was <laughs> trying to get help on a chemistry assignment and my professor wasn't in his office, but I walked down and I saw another professor. I'm like, do you teach chemistry? He's like, yeah. I was like, can I ask you a question? And he, of course he just like let me come in his office and ask him. And I don't think you would get that at a bigger university. It's so much hands-on. Like if you need help from a professor, you can pretty much show up at their office at any time. And they've got your back. A time a professor surprised me was in my environmental science class. I complimented his shirt one day and it was a cat astronaut shirt and he came to class with a shirt just for me so we could match the following class and it, it was awesome. Like you don't, you don't get that at a big school. From day one, even if you're in a gen ed class, the professors make themselves very accessible. Besides office hours, they're around on campus and they love to stop by and have formal conversations, informal conversations. You can always reach them and then there's those really cool moments where you can have dinner with a professor at their house or form that relationship where you're hanging out with them in an informal setting um, beyond just the academic setting. A lot of the professors here have multiple office hours and they have open doors and you can just walk in at any time that they're available or you can email them and they're like, yeah, come by in 20 minutes because they're there and they're great and they help you out with anything that you may need and that's not something that you can get at most colleges, I mean bigger or smaller. Always, always there for you regardless of it's about class or about grad school or you know, 10 years down the road. Even one time we met at 6 p.m., which was cool because, you know, she was already at home and she came back to help me with my data so I could get it ready for the next day. The professors are always really excited when you come by and make time to see them at their office hours. They're willing to help you, work with you, and they just want to see you succeed. That's why I love the program here, because there's so much assistance and there's so much motivation that they want you to succeed. And that's the best part about it. Yeah, it's very true. Professors get very invested in your success here. So you've got your career coaches working with you, plus you've got your professors who are very well connected. And uh, a lot of times they're helping you get internships and jobs and things like that. Uh, I can't promise that Professor Zorn will get you a cat astronaut shirt if you're here, but we'll do our best to see if he's got any more of those around. All right, so life outside of the classroom. Um, you, you, you know, we want you to have a great student life here. We want you to build good memories and uh, it is active around the campus. Once again, location plays a big part of that, not just for internships, but for fun stuff. Within an hour of our campus, there is anything and everything you can possibly dream up. Uh, campus is very active, but if you do want to get off campus for things, there's a lot going on. And obviously having Lake Michigan on our back porch doesn't hurt. We never get tired of the views back there. Our, we have about 2,700 students on campus, so our students often say, hey, we're big enough that, you know, I don't know everybody, but we're small enough that I probably recognize most, you know, faces at least when I'm walking up and down campus. We've got a lot of different eateries on campus, so you're not just looking at the cafeteria. You can go at any of the restaurants here right on the campus. And it's important to know that 70% of our students do live here on the campus, so we are the full residential campus experience. In fact, last year our students came from 38 states and 10 countries. Uh, we know that 80% of our students do stick around on the weekend. We're not checking up on you. It's just that you guys eat. And when you eat, you've got to scan your ID. So we have a pretty good idea who is around on the weekends. But the reason your students stick around on the weekend is because there's over 130 clubs and organizations. There is something for everybody. If you've got a hobby, we probably have a club or organization. You can get into fraternities and sororities. Um, the activities board plans a lot of different activities. A lot of these groups plan different weekend activities. Plus there's sports and theater and just all kinds of stuff going on here on campus. We do have over, uh, we have 11 residence halls. If uh, you come and visit, we'll show those to you. 
So I'm not going to take you through them today, obviously, but there's a couple pictures on the side there for you. The Tower Residence Hall is our newest residence hall, and that's right in front of you there. The lower two floors on your screen, you'll see look a little different, and that's because that's another uh, common area. So even if you don't live in there, you can utilize that. There's fireplaces and um, study areas and just different hangout spots in there. So we've got a full student union, but then this, this is kind of a second student union, if you will. Here's part of the inside of that building. You can see there's big screen TV in the background there. And on the right, there's some booths where people can study and hang out. The backside of the building does have beach volleyball courts, also has a gas fireplace with Adirondack chairs overlooking Lake Michigan, because just to the right of that course, uh, that sand volleyball court about 50 feet is Lake Michigan. So uh, it, it's pretty nice sitting back there. It's, uh, I'll tell you what, campus life has never been more rough, right? Uh, it's pretty nice. And, um, Let's talk a little bit about athletics and recreation. Our students like to stay active, whether you're an athlete or not. You have access to everything on campus. Uh, th there's no additional fee for this, by the way. This is just, once you pay tuition, your ID opens the door to the rec center. You can use the rock wall, the pool. We've got multiple fitness centers in there, the indoor track. If you wanna shoot baskets on the main basketball court, go ahead, nobody's gonna care. I mean, if it's Saturday night and there's a game going on, they might get upset about it. But uh, in all seriousness, you, you can do that most times of the day. So it is wide open for you. And, um, you know, if you want to be a varsity athlete as well, we are NCAA Division Three. We compete in one of the top conferences in the nation. So you would get a very competitive college or a competitive athletic experience. You're going to work hard. You're going to play hard. Uh, many of our teams, uh, you know, some of them do get nationally ranked. Uh, but at the end of four years, it's about graduating. Here's a quick video about our athletics and some of the phrases you hear students say in this video apply to everything across campus, athletics, academics, and everything like, um, you know, make your own destiny. We believe you can be anything you want to be. That's not just athletics. That's anything academically as well. Or uh, you'll hear them talk about, you know, needing the best. Well, that, that's academically too, like our labs and our buildings. We really want you to have the best. I see no defeat. No defeat. No defeat. I see no defeat. I have the best. I have the best. In me. In me. I have the best. In me. So I require the best. I require. I require the best. So I, I require the best. Warriors like us. We make our own. We make our own destiny. We make our own destiny. Sweat more in preparation and bleed less in battle. Less in battle. We. We are. We are Carthaginians. Carthaginians. We are Carthaginians. We push back. We push back. We push back in the face of adversity. We turn up the heat. We turn up the heat. We turn up the heat. We stand on the shoulders of those who have gone before. And we set the stage for those to come. Is it in you too? Are you one of us? Make your move. 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 All right, so you can compete, or if you're, you're not uh, going to be a varsity athlete, we love to support our teams. It's a big part of what we do here. Um, athletic opportunities for people who are not in varsity athletics, there's club sports. Inframurals are huge on campus. Anybody can participate in that. The student organizations on the right of your screen, same thing. And then you've got group fitness classes at the bottom of your screen. There's no additional charge for those, by the way. Once again, if the, uh, the personal trainers are holding it at 7 o'clock on Tuesdays and Thursdays, you could just show up and away you'd go. Uh, just a couple quick pictures here. Obviously, the softball team, the basketball team after a big victory, this, <laughs> the uh, fans are storming the court there. And uh, the volleyball team last year went to the national final four. They missed going to the championship match by one point in the last match. We were heartbroken, but they had an awesome season. All right, arts and uh, performances. 
this is something we're really passionate about, and these are big programs. Theater and music, if you're interested in that. Uh, the theater program does eight productions every year. The music program, some of them travel nationally, some travel internationally. Uh, they do a huge Christmas festival every year. And so there's a lot of opportunities to get involved in, uh, in that. You can earn scholarship money for that too, by the way. So that's pretty cool. But one of the neat things is you don't have to major or minor in theater or music to be part of the program. In fact, 57% of our students in these programs, they major in something else, but they've been doing this their whole life. So they love it and you can get college credit for it. So it's pretty cool. Uh, here's one of our choirs. They perform every Christmas down uh, in downtown Chicago in one of the big theaters down there. Uh, this is our Christmas festival here on campus. Just a couple pictures and uh, one of the dance uh, troops on stage as well. Religious life, we are affiliated with the Evangelical Lutheran Church of America. Uh, we were founded by ELCA pioneers in 1847 and we continue that heritage today. We're very proud of that. Uh, everybody, you know, not everybody, but somebody always asks me at least once a year, do I have to become Lutheran to graduate? The answer is no, you don't. We're welcoming of all faiths, so we have more Catholic students than Lutheran students. We have more non-denominational students than Lutheran students. We have Muslim students. We have Jewish students. We have students who weren't really raised in a Christian environment that are kind of trying to figure it out. And uh, you can be as, as involved or as uninvolved in religious life here as you want to be. Nobody's going to force feed you, but it's there if you want it. No professors are going to tell you in classes what to believe or what not to believe. And I appreciate that from a religious standpoint, but also that goes for a political standpoint as well. I've had three kids here. They've enjoyed those experiences and the debates, but nobody's ever tried to, you know, kind of force feed them, which is really cool. All right, so kind of getting to the end here, careers and outcomes. Here's just a couple of our recent graduates in 2020. I told you earlier, a lot of our students get hired before graduation because of all the opportunities here and the way that we prepare them. So uh, in the interest of time, I just put about five or six of them up here. Marco was a management marketing major. He had three internships before graduation. Uh, two around the Chicago area, one down in Florida one summer. He chose to go with Oracle and uh, got that job in March of his senior year. Antoine, district director for a state representative. He's a political science major and uh, he works uh, for a state representative in Illinois now. He was hired in November of his senior year. Rachel, she wanted to be uh, going on to veterinary school. She's going to be an animal doctor and uh, got into the University of Illinois uh, vet school, which is one of the best in the nation. Patrick, he's a clinical lab researcher, he's a biology major, works for a, a lab down in the Chicago area. He was hired a few weeks before graduation. Bailey, she's a nurse, she was hired uh, junior year for crying out loud. That's pretty awesome. So she knew where she was going for qu quite a while. Jacqueline, she had several internships. Uh, one of her internships was with SC Johnson Wax, which is one of the biggest privately held companies on the planet. They're only 10 minutes from our campus. She was offered a job with them August of her senior year, so before she even started senior year. Kendall, same thing, she used her internship. She had three of them by graduation. She chose to go with a large firm called Jockey International, a large underwear maker on the global level. Um, you can see when she was hired, November of her senior year. Rosaretta, nursing major. She wanted to go to Florida, so she got hired down in Florida in April. I think it's funny that her picture is in the snow and she went to Florida. Maybe that had something to do with it. And then Reed, finally, he's the last one I'll put up here, finance major. He had uh, several internships and, and chose Abbott Laboratories down in, um, in the northern part of Illinois there. And he was hired August of his senior year, so right before he started senior year. All right, so in the interest of time, we're kind of getting to the end here. I, I do want to touch on scholarships and how important um, financial aid is, obviously, especially mom and dad always want to know about that. I will tell you, Carthage offers $20 million a year in scholarships and grants. Remember, grants you don't pay back. So that's a lot of money for a school our size to bring the cost down to affordable level. We did something really cool back in September. Our president lowered the price of tuition for the coming year by 30%. He did that back in September. That was before the pandemic was even on the radar, so that had nothing to do with it. And I've had people ask me, well, hey, did you lower tuition because you were hurting for students? And the answer is no, actually, two of our last three incoming freshman classes were record setters. So he really wanted people to understand that a Carthage education is affordable. And so that's why it went down. Now, 31.5 is still a big number, but I just showed you a screen where we have 20 million in scholarship money available. So more than likely, you're still not gonna pay 31.5. I'm gonna help you get a lot of that scholarship money. So your, your director of admission and financial aid is somebody like me. 
and they are gonna help you build the biggest scholarship grant package possible. At the bottom of your screen, you see three line items of green, and that's how we're gonna do it. Number one, merit scholarships up to $11,000. That's just for your academics when you apply. We reward good academics, and um, so you're gonna get up to $11,000 per year. You don't even need to ask for that or apply to that. Second thing, competitive scholarship program. Now these scholarships, uh, you can see there's a variety of them up there. I'm gonna touch on the top one in the interest of time, presidential scholarship program. You'll notice there's nine of them that are full tuition and 26 of them that are $22,000 each. Keep in mind, any scholarship and any grant that we offer you as a student, you get it every year for four years. Uh, some schools will give you a mixture of one in four year awards. We don't have any one year awards. You get it for all four years. Uh, you don't need that stress in your life. So just know that going in. The scholarship applications for these programs will open up October 1 and they're due in by November 30th. But you've got to be an admitted student to apply. So if, you if you're a senior and you haven't applied yet, I would encourage you to go ahead and apply and I'll talk more about that in a minute. Um, and then finally, the FAFSA at the bottom of your screen. FAFSA is an acronym, stands for Free Application for Federal Student Aid. That opens up October 1. I would encourage you to file that. If you have friends going to a state school and they say, oh, don't even file it, we don't get anything for financial aid. Um, you know, please know we're not a state school, we're a private school. And we do give 100% of our students that file a FAFSA additional grant money from Carthage. We also try to get you the federal money as well. But if, even if the federal government's not gonna help you, Carthage is gonna give you additional grant money stacked on top of your scholarships. So you start stacking things up, it adds up to a lot of money. If you apply to that presidential scholarship program and you get, get invited and you come and compete, you're here on a Saturday morning for about three hours. Now this year it might be virtual, but worst case scenario, you get another $1,500 scholarship just for competing, even if you don't win a big one. So that's another you know, 1,500 times four years, that's $6,000. Uh, you can see we start stacking these up and it, it brings that price down to a much more affordable level especially for the, the value in, and the education you get here. As I mentioned, FAFSA is a big deal. Definitely file your FAFSA October 1. Uh, that kind of gets our, our uh, financial aid started for you. And we do have a four-year graduation guarantee, which is really nice. I mean, things are so kind of uncertain on the planet right now, so it's nice to have some certainty about things. It gives you a lot of peace of mind. And what a lot of students don't realize is the national average in America for graduation now is almost five years. Uh, in, in fact, just over 30% of students nationwide uh, are graduating in four years. So most students are going for five and six years. My youngest son is at a large state school and his first visit, they just told him you're gonna be there five years. Don't even try to do it in four, it's not gonna happen. And he's okay with that because he had other motivations for wanting to be there. But uh, you just have to know that going in here, four years, that's enough, that gets you um, that gets you out started on, on a salary job. You know, you're ahead of a, a lot of your uh, friends that might go to other schools and gets you on that pay scale uh, a little bit faster. So you know, if you have to go to school a fifth year, it costs a lot more because you're not just paying tuition, but you also lost a paycheck that you could have had. And it's not a part-time paycheck. That's a career sized paycheck. That can be a pretty big deal. So we know that uh, with the four-year graduation guarantee, you're probably going to graduate in four years. Really hard not to make it through in four years. We're going to keep you on track. We also go out and we want to know what we did well, what we didn't do well. Um, we're really passionate about the student experience here. So we also want to know, did you get a job? We have an outside firm that does these surveys and on the screen there, you'll notice year after year, over 90% of our students do report getting a job in their field or getting into a graduate school within six months. So we feel like the things we're doing here are really working to help you get where you want to go in life. Now it's a two way road. You've got to meet us halfway and take advantage of those opportunities, but we're going to lead you to that. And um, it usually works out pretty well. And ultimately, in May of your senior year, this will be you taking your picture on the lake too, right? All right, so if you haven't applied yet, I did put a fee waiver code up in the right-hand corner of your screen there. Our application is right on the website. Just go on there. Um, by the way, we don't have an essay question anymore on the application. You'll get to do essays later, but you don't have to do it on the app. So it only takes you about 30 minutes to fill it out. And uh, you can put that fee waiver code on there. That will save you $35, which is awesome. Hey, $35 is like, you know, three lunches at Chick-fil-A. Now you know where I like to eat my lunch. But uh, in all seriousness, though, then send us your transcript from your high school and your ACT or SAT if you have it. Now, this year is kind of a weird year with the pandemic. I know not everybody got to take the ACT or SAT. 
So if you didn't, don't sweat it, don't worry about it. We're not, this is like a one year anomaly. We're not really looking at it this year. If you have it and you like it, send it in. If you don't, don't even worry about it. Uh, but list out all the things you're interested or uh, you're involved in at school and in your community. We really look for that. We, we love students that like to get involved and are good academically, obviously. You know, those are usually our most successful students. We'd love to have you come and visit sometime, Monday through Friday, you see some visit times up there. Um, you know, you, you would get a tour with a student ambassador, just you and your family with that student, everybody wears masks, and then you would connect with your admission financial aid advisor, just to make sure we get all your questions answered before you leave. We're also doing Saturday tours right now in very small groups. To be honest, we're, uh, we're uh, out till towards the end of October for the waiting list on those. So weekdays are a little bit easier to get you in. You can also do a virtual tour on our website right here. This is kind of fun. You click on these red bars here and other things will open up. It's kind of like playing Jeopardy. You could do academics for 500, Alex, or student life for 1,000, Alex. Um, and, and things will open up behind there. You can interact a little bit and uh, go at it from there. But we, we hope you come and see the campus. It, really, the pictures don't do it justice. And we'd love to be able to talk to you. If you do have questions outside of today, you've got my email address on your screen. Pretty easy one to remember. It's just my first name at carthage.edu. And uh, if you do have any questions, I will hang out here and uh, be happy to answer them. I don't see any in the question, any questions in there right now, but uh, we do have about five minutes that we could spend answering anything that's on your mind there. And if you have to leave, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, good luck in your college search and, and really, you know, come and see us or, you know, anytime questions come up, just give me a holler. Thanks, everybody. A question came up, are we always test optional? We do have a test optional program, even in a non-pandemic year. So yes, we do. Uh, part of that program, you would simply have to uh, send us a graded paper from one of your high school classes and then have a short, usually a 15 or 20 minute interview to go along with that. So yes, it is possible to do test optional. Thank you for that question. Any other questions? Okay, somebody's asking about AP scores for credit. Yes, we take almost all AP scores for credit. If you get a three or higher on most AP tests, it'll transfer with you. Now, psychology and calculus, I believe, are four or higher. I think calculus is hard enough. It's kind of cruel, but that's the way it is. Um, so yeah, most AP courses are, are uh, able to transfer for credit. You can actually Google Carthage College AP courses, and you can see the whole list of them. If you don't see your class on the list, let me know. We're always adding to that. Um, somebody did ask about IEPs. Yes, we have a lot of students with IEPs. We do have a learning specialist here on the campus. So um, no problem on that. That learning specialist will work with you as much as you want her to work with you. Her name's Diane Showalter. And she will also work with your professors to make sure you're getting everything you need. Carthage is really about personalized service. And that's, that's something we really believe in for our students. So we really treat every student differently. And every student we understand has a different definition of success and how they're going to get there. And uh, that, that's what we do. Good question. Any others? Don't be shy. I love questions. <laughs> We've got about two minutes left here, so feel free to ask them. At this time, I don't see any other questions. So um, yeah, thanks again, everybody for joining us. It was great to have you here.
Hi. Yeah, just going to say thank you uh, for, for coming and joining uh, Greg tonight and learning more about Carthage. Uh, there will be a quick survey that will come up. Just take a couple seconds to fill that out. Just four quick questions uh, on tonight's sessions and everything else. Uh, the, the, this recording will be available for you. So you can go to IACAC.org uh, to view that. And then sign up for any other sessions that you would like to see and learn more about some other schools and some other opportunities. Again, at IACAC.org. Uh, thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you, everybody.